Hey everybody, my wife had me pick up this Roomba i7 Plus that had recently dropped significantly in price on Amazon. As you know, I have reviewed several vacuum cleaners, which I have. It begs the question, why do I need this thing? It has to do more with Lily than anything, and our daily requirement to have to vacuum just for dog hair, if for no other reason. And if we can, in fact, have this thing vacuum up the dog hair throughout the house and not have to deal with that on a daily basis, that would be one hell of a time saver. We're going to find out if this actually does what it purports to do. So we're going to finish the unboxing and we're going to jump right into this. Let's get started. Along with the bag supplied with the extra parts, there's also one installed in the base station. There's nothing to do here. It's ready to plug in. I had thought, being all environmentally friendly, they were going to supply reusable bags for this base station. Of course, they did not. I did, however, find on eBay sellers that do sell reusable bags for this unit, so I'm definitely going to check that out, possibly purchase a couple of those. And this is, at least for now, our strategically located base station. It may move, but for now, this is where it is. Let's move on and see what extra parts came with the unit. We got that little spinny brush, a filter, and an extra bag. Of course, there's the main unit, under which can be found the instructions. This first time, the vacuum cleaner will be manually placed on the charger so that it could be adequately charged. While that's charging, I could actually read the manuals. There are two of them. I'd installed the software on both of our phones. This is my wife's phone. Pretty much standard fare for installing software, having to create an account, connecting the device to your Wi-Fi, and then subsequently updating the firmware on the device. Really nothing special. Why I continued to hold the phone sideways through this entire process is anybody's guess, but there we are. The next step in the start guide tells us to start cleaning, so we did, though I feel there's a step missing here. We were excited to see how Lily would react, so we got underway, hit the new job button. And this is where the guide is a bit wrong, because mapping could be done as a separate feature without cleaning, where the device runs around without vacuuming, using less power. It's much more efficient, as we'll find out later, but we'll continue. So we'll start up, but don't judge. We let the floor go for a couple of days to do this test today. Lily's reactions are priceless, but I do want to make sure in all seriousness that she reacts well to this unit and doesn't, you know, try and destroy it or nothing like that. Seems to be mostly curiosity, and my hope is she'll eventually just get bored of it and not notice it anymore as it goes around the house to clean. Currently, there's no map in the system. It is figuring out where it's going and where furniture is and obstacles around it while it's vacuuming. This is very inefficient. I'll speed up some of this footage and slow down to the relevant parts. We can see that it did have some trouble here catching the corner of the carpet and work its way around it. When the time is sped up, you can see that there's a default algorithm that it uses where it just goes in sort of a grid to try and cover as much area as possible till it runs into an obstacle, goes around the obstacle, and then every now and again, you can see it tries to find the perimeter as it walks around the edge of stuff. It operates in the same function as when it does the map. This method will ultimately build a map, but it will do so a lot slower. Once you do have a map, you do have the advantage of marking off areas where you don't want the vacuum cleaner to go. As we'll find out, there are situations in my house I have found that I don't want it to go. And with a map, you could cordon those areas off. Cable management, in this case, speaker cable becomes increasingly important for these machines. As we see, it grabbed onto a speaker cable and pulled it out. They should be tied up such that they don't dangle to the floor. And here we have the device detecting that it's full, automatically returning to the base station and aligning itself. We'll find that the emptying cycle sounds like a jet turbine. We all waited here patiently because we really didn't know what was coming next. Lily thought that it was safe enough for a closer look. <laughs> the machine will move to the exact location which it had stopped at when it was full and continue vacuuming. 
You hear that really hideous sound now? Turns out that while it was emptying, it managed to suck a receipt from the supermarket halfway through the system, which got lodged into the system. I discovered this while turning it over on inspection and removed it. I was interested to see how this would operate on Shag Rug. This looks like a non-starter. This sounded like it was in pain. This is going to be something that I'm going to probably map off this rug except for a small section that allows it to get to the other side of the living room. This rug would be more appropriately handled by the Dyson 11. I really didn't have high expectations for a Roomba to be cleaning a shag rug like the Dyson 11 does. We're going to send it home manually. So now we're going to do what we should have done first, and that's a mapping run to learn the floor plan without the vacuuming. So we're going to start a mapping run. This is as loud as the Roomba gets for this process. It's working very methodically. It's just mapping. I've left some debris on the floor. You can see that it's not picking it up. It rolls right over it. It's just going back and forth, trying to find any obstruction and the perimeter. And that's all it's doing. In order to speed up testing for this video, I've closed several doors in this house to make the known universe for this Roomba smaller. That way I just have a smaller testing area for this review, made the mapping quicker, the total vacuuming quicker, and what have you. During the mapping, the Roomba got trapped under the couch. I'm recreating how this happened. Though it was way under the couch, all the way in the back, we had to move all sorts of furniture. Where the carpet rolls off, we could see where the bare floor is. It just got stuck and I had to remove it. We're gonna to have to find a way to cordon this off so it doesn't attempt to do this again. So I just use basic things to obstruct the Roomba from going in that area, knowing that once the mapping is done, I could use the mapping software to stop it from going around the couch or most of the shag rug since it doesn't effectively vacuum the shag rug anyway. So here's the entrance to that area. This entrance will be done by the entertainment center and that's as far as it'll go. So here we have the map of the known area that was produced by that exercise. And that area in the living room where I put the cardboard boxes. And I'm basically saying this whole lower section with the couch is a no-go area. And I may have to refine this as it runs. But this is good enough for now. The finer points and changes of the map will be updated as the vacuuming cycles run. I wanted to see if tape would cause the dirt sensor to trigger. It did not. Dog kibble carpet test was a pass. The big clump of hair on the carpet was also a pass, and that managed to kick off the dirt sensor. We could see the Roomba going over the area several times to ensure that all the hair is gone. Compared to the first run, where this thing ran essentially blind, after it's done the training and has the map, this robot runs much more methodical, much more efficient, and essentially gets the job done a whole lot quicker. On one hand, it's impressive that it manages to work under all the chair legs to get all the dirt out from between these areas and yet on the other hand it can actually get caught between these legs that it clearly should be able to get through because one little part of the bumper manages to get stuck and only after turning and turning 20 times does it manage to easily get out of there small toys and items present no problem as it effortlessly pushes it out of the way it is possible every now and again it gets stuck in some strange service like the leg of this guitar stand requiring manual intervention to continue. And that's the only time I'd use the actual buttons on the device. Bringing it home, starting cleaning, or doing some area cleaning or whatever would be done on the app on the phone. It's now making its way into the living room, starting its regular routine, but there is an invisible shield that I have put up in the program on the map that should prevent it from going near the couch where it got caught last time. And we can see that it stopped. There's like a blue light flashing, an invisible boundary. I'm trying to work around it. There should be an area up front here. I may have uh, been too strict with the map. Let's see. No, there it is. Nope, there it's not. Yeah, so I'm going to have to adjust the map because it can't seem to get around there. I was trying to leave an opening for it to get through to the other half of the living room. It looks like that's not going to happen. So it's just going to go around. This is the end for it. And it's going to continue with the rest of the house modification let it go through but now it goes under the ottoman allowing for a further refinement 
a second no-go zone under the first no-go zone solved for this issue. With the map and the exclusion zone all set up, it's pretty much set up to run automatically at 1 o'clock every day, and that's about it. So in the end, if you've got a pet and bare floors or a carpet with low shag and you don't want to vacuum every day, these devices are now smart enough and with the exclusion zones and the maps and the auto emptying features, it's getting to the point where it's worthwhile to own a device like this to save you hours per week if you're vacuuming every single day to keep your house free of pet hair. Though there are a couple of quirks yet, it does get caught here and there. It can get stuck, it will inevitably require some maintenance, and this is not a replacement for your vacuum cleaner by any means, but it definitely reduces the frequency of usage by a magnitude. And that is my review of the Roomba i7 Plus. I hope you found it enjoyable, entertaining, and insightful. Hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button to be notified when more videos like this come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?